All right, guys. We got test coming up. We just got to make sure we can do slope. Get yourself a checkbox. All right, you have to know the difference between um, if a guy's getting better or worse, staying the same. If I look at A, he's staying the same every day. He's a do nothing. Uh, I'm just putting in a number. B, he's getting better every day. As we go on to the next day and the next day, he's getting better. How much is he getting better? He's going up $1 every day. We don't have to write a one on the bottom if, he do, if you do something every day, that's your score. He's going up $1, so his score is 1. C, this guy's getting worse every day over here. He's getting worse. Well, not every day, but he's getting worse. So he's a negative. How much is he going down? Well, he's going down $3. We don't call him a negative 3 because he's not doing it every day. It's taking him two days to lose that money. So he scores a negative three, three halves. D. D is the one that's undefined because if I touch, here's D, right? Anywhere on that line is D. Tomorrow, I don't know if he went up or down. Did he go down tomorrow? Did he stay the same? Did he get better? I don't know. He never exists tomorrow. He never moves to tomorrow. So I don't know if he's getting better or worse or doing nothing. He's stuck in time. He's undefined. E. E, I think was this one. E is getting better. So he's going up. He's making a dollar. So good for you. We don't give him a score of one because he doesn't make a dollar every day. It takes him three days to make the dollar. So we give him a score of one third. Up one dollar every three days. F. I think it was... I think it was here, 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 and here. I think the line's off, but okay. I think this is where it says the dots are in your paper. Bad job on my part. All right, this guy's going down. He's losing money because he gets getting poor and poor and poor and poor and poor. He's going down one dollar, but it takes three days. So he's going down one dollar. We don't give him a score of negative one because he didn't do it in one day. He did it in three days. Okay, over here, all of these are going to be. Y equals, Y equals, Y equals, Y equals, Y equals. But actually, you know what? The, the B, this guy who's undefined, who's stuck in time, he breaks every rule. He's, he's going to be X equals. He breaks every rule there is to break. Okay. On all the ones that are following the rules, we have to remember that these equations are all my laundry. And the baby's laundry. My laundry is the slope. It has the X. The baby's laundry is where it starts. So let's start with A. A, he's going, he's making $2. Good for him. He is making money. He's getting richer and richer and richer. But we don't give him a score of two because he doesn't do it every day. He does it one day, two. He does, he goes up two every three days. So his score is up two, but he does it every three days. The baby's laundry says, where is he right now? Not in the future, not in the past, right, right now on this line, which is the present. That line is right here. Right now, he's starting with nine bucks in his pocket. So he starts with nine bucks, plus nine. Um, I'm going to skip to C. C, he makes $2 every day. So if you do it every day, that's your score. He makes $2. Where does he start? He starts at zero, but if you start at zero, we don't mention it. If there's ever a zero in your, in your pile, that pile doesn't get mentioned. Let's look at D. D starts there and it keeps not going up, not going down. He's a do nothing. So his score is zero. But again, if zero's in your box, you don't mention it. So where does he start? Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight. E, where's E? I'm guessing this one's E. So E's going down, so E's losing money. I have to put a negative in there. He's losing $1. I'm not going to give him a score of negative 1 because he doesn't do it every day. It takes him three days, so negative one-third. And he starts at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So he starts with negative $5. And finally, the X one, the guy who's undefined, who's stuck in time. You see this little X right there? That means this is the X axis. This is like the timeline. So we're going to say on the timeline, on the x-axis, he's stuck in time at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. He's stuck at negative 8. That's his equation. His x is negative 8. All right. These guys. It's exactly like before. 
my laundry, my laundry, my laundry, baby's laundry, baby's laundry, baby's laundry, baby's laundry. Okay, so in my laundry, my laundry gets the X, 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 it's extra large. All right, let's see. This guy, on day zero, he had 10 bucks. On day four, he had 18 bucks, which means he made eight bucks. We're not gonna give him a score of eight because he didn't do it every day. It took him four days. So we're gonna divide by four and he's actually making $2 every day and that's what goes in my laundry. And the baby's laundry is, where's he at right now? Well, on day zero, which is right now, he's starting with $10. So the baby's laundry is plus 10. Over here, he went from $13 down to eight, which means he lost $5. So we're not gonna give him a score of negative five because he didn't do it every day. He did it every two days. So we're gonna divide by two and his score is negative five halves. Down $5 every two days. Where is he at right now? Well, on day zero, he's starting with $13 in his pocket. So plus 13, y equals negative five half x plus 13. This one, he went from 68 bucks up to 82 bucks. He made $14, but he didn't, we're not going to give him a score of 14 because he didn't do it every day. It took him two days. So what he does is 14 divided by two. He does seven every day. So his score is seven uh, X, which means he's making $7 every day. That's what that means. Every day he's going up seven. But okay, so this means $7 every day or seven times X. But if I work... If I make $7 every day and I work for 10 days, on day 10, if I multiply that by seven, I should have $70. How come I only have 68? Because I have to minus two, I started with negative $2. Maybe I started $2 in debt. So that's why I'm $2 lower than I should be. If I, if I make $7 every day, after 10 days, I should be at 70. So apparently I started at negative two, so, or I have to minus $2 for it to be right. Let's see, over here, um, this guy went, uh, he had $5 and then he had negative $1, which is actually down six. But it, he didn't, we're not gonna give him a score of negative six because he did it in three days, so we'll divide by three. And really, if you lose $6 in three days, you're losing $2 every day. So his score is negative two. If I lost, $2 every day. I'm going to take negative 2 and I'm going to multiply it by my days. So after five days, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. I should be at negative $10. I should be $10 in debt. How is it possible that I still have $5? How do I have positive $5 when I should have negative $10? I must have started with $15. That's the only way this could be true. Yeah, I'm losing $2 every day, but I started with some money. That's why I'm not broke yet. Okay, let's see. This one is the one, the zero, the zero. The one, the zero, the zero. Right? You start with the ones digit and you just put zeros for every one. The rain comes, hits everything that's not covered. And this one, the roof covers all of those. This would be 25 one hundredths. So would this one. But you just throw away what the rain hits. If the rain hits it, it's ruined. The rain hits the two over here, so I gotta throw two away in the 25 and making it 23. And over here, the, the rain hits the 10, so I have to throw 10 away in the 100, and 100 becomes 90, and that's what that fraction is. Over here, the 25 is cool. Nothing got ruined in the 25, just the one in the 100. So in the 100, I throw away one, and I've got 99. Over here, we could say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or we could just say make pink numbers. This pink number is 9, 25, 36, 64. We talked about that you have to know that these two sides add up. The blue sides are the ones whose pink numbers add up, not the green side. The green side is the answer. So the green side is the diagonal side. The hypotenuse is always the answer. So, and for this one, for the first one, I need this side to be 16 so that these two add together to make 25, right? So we subtract 25 minus nine to get 16. And then to find our answer, we take the square root of that. And this missing side is four. Over here at 36 and 64, I add them together. These do add together to make the green side because the green side is the diagonal, that's 100. But that's our pink number to find our answer. We take the square root of it, this is 10. 
Rational or irrational, this is the pi ruins it, irrational. 2.34, rational, it doesn't go on forever. 0. 0.16161616, 16, there's a pattern, that's rational. Six sevenths, that's a fraction, all fractions are rational, that's what rational means. Square root of 24, 24 is not a pink number, so that's irrational. The square root of 29 minus the square root of 16, I said if any part of you goes on forever, everything goes on forever. There we go. Um... That's, that ruins it, irrational. All right, this is the high and hello problem. Here's high. Here's hello. In this sentence, I see high. I'm going to replace it with hello. I'm going to replace high with 2x plus 3, which is hello. Every th the rest of the sentence, I write exactly same. All right, 3x, positive 2 times 2x is positive 4x. Positive 2 times 3 is positive 6, equals negative 29. I have too many x's on this side. I have 7x's plus 6 equals negative 29. That's all baby's laundry. I'm going to minus 6, minus 6. 7x's equal negative 35, right? It's all in the negative team. We're going to divide by 7, and x's equal negative 5's. Okay, x's equal negative 5's. I take it back to the beginning. y is going to equal 2 times negative 5 plus 3, because negative 5 is x. y equals negative 10 plus 3, negative 10 versus positive 3. The negatives win by 7, so this is negative 5, negative 7. All right, let's see. I'm going to multiply this one by 2 because I'm going to take this whole row and multiply it by 2. And when I do, I get 4x's, negative 6y's, and 22. So I made all the numbers twice as big. Why did I do that? Why twice as big? Because 4x's and 3x's, now I have 7x's. The reason I did that is because now I have negative 6y's and positive 6y's, and the y's kill each other off, which is great for us. 22 and 27 is 49. So because the y's did a nice thing for us and went away, we can divide by 7 and x's are 7's. All right, if x's are 7's, the easiest equation to me up there, the ones that has the least amount of negatives in there, is this one. So I'm going to say 3x's plus 6y's equals 27. But now I know x's are 7's. So I'm going to take x and replace it with 7 because I know what it is. So not 3 times x, but 3 times 7 plus 6y's equal 27. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 6y's equal 27. It's 7. All right, these are both baby laundry because they have no letters. So let's minus the 21's and just put it over here. Minus the 21's. And 6y's equal 27 minus 21 is 6. Divide by 6, divide by 6. Y's are 1's. So the answer is 7, 1. And finally, this last one. Either the problem is going to be normal and have one answer or be weird and be 0 or infinity. Let's see. It only gets weird if the x's go away. We have 3x's on this side. We have 2x's on that side. Nothing gets weird. They don't cancel them out. This is a normal problem right in the middle. It's got one answer. On this side, 2 times x is 2x's. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 equals 2x's minus 6. On this side, I have 2x's. On that side, I have 2x's. All right, the x's go away. They're the same. They go away. This is a weird problem. Negative 6 equals negative 6. Yeah, always. Infinity answers. I don't know why this infinity has got like that. Okay. Over here, 5x minus 10 equals 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 10 is negative 50. Okay, let's see. We have 5x's on this side. We have 5x's on this side. This is going to get weird. It's going to be 0 or infinity. Does negative 10 equal negative 50? Nope, not never. On this side, we have 3x's. On this side, we have negative 3x's. As much as those look like the same number, they're not. They don't cancel each other out. This problem does not get weird. It's just going to have one answer like normal. All right. How many of those can you do tomorrow? Good luck.